I don't... What are your thoughts on school? I'd be curious to see what your thoughts are on school because back then when we were students, right? right. Memorization was really 90% of, of school. Right. You don't need it anymore. It's like, do we no. need to have, like, do they need to change the current curriculum well, to, here, to map to 2020? Yeah, well, here, here's a great example. A good friend of mine, he's a principal at a private school. So he had to sub in for a, uh, a teacher that was sick. It was on a Friday, seventh period, last period of the day. And so he gave the, these kids a riddle that would really make them, you know, think and, you know, really have to get the process going and whatnot. And so class ended and they said, what's the answer? He said, I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you on Monday. And as one of the kids was walking in, they just said, I'll Google it over the weekend. <laughs> and so we're, we're shortcutting ourselves. Right. Whereas we used to have to, golly, let's really think about this. Right. And I'm as guilty as anybody. Yeah. You know, oh, what's the answer? Oh, hold on. Let me just Google that and I'll find the answer. I mean, but we used to have to think. Right. And now I, I wonder what the effect of that is. I, yeah, and is it good or bad? Like, and because and now you have to think about different things, maybe. Right. But I almost think maybe it is better. Maybe it is be like now it's it's like we don't have a we have there's no lack of information, right? So now it just comes down to like marketing in a lot of cases. Right. Right. Well, my son even gets on me. I'm like, oh, well, let me Google that, and I'll write out this complete sentence. <laughs> I'm like, just use keywords, Dad. Keyword. I'm like, right. what? I mean, don't have to put a question mark in there. Right. Goes, no, you don't have to do that. So, but I can't imagine. You know, back in the day in college, you had to write a research paper. Well, you go to the library, and here's seven books on your subject. You check them out. Right. You do your research, put it back, and then when the professor came back and said, this paper sucked, you're like. Professor, this is all the books I had to go from. Right. Oh, well, okay. Well, then, you right, know, then right, you got maybe right. a better grade. Today, what's your excuse today for having a terrible research paper? Right. You've got everything at your fingertips. Yeah. There's no excuse. So I... Yeah, I'm it's interesting. I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. I should mention now at this point, because everyone listening and, and or watching is probably saying, who is this guy, <laughs> this guy? sitting at the bar <laughs> with Jono? Yeah. Pastor David Dendy. That's me, yeah. Soon to be comedian. <laughs> How does that happen? How does one go from Pastor David to oh, well, Comedian David? Well, we're not Comedian David yet, but You're we're, not. We're, we're moving, we're getting close. Tell the people so. where you, now most people, you know, I did, as you know, I did stand oh, up for 10 years. Absolutely. You know, um, most, I didn't have a typical uh, stand up career. You're not about to have a typical <laughs> stand-up career. Sorry, Ty, I just dropped my uh, thing. Hopefully I'm still talking. I'm probably still talking. Tell me if I'm still talking. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I didn't, most comedians, they go to open mic night right. multiple times. Then right. they grind away, they get a spot. You are starting in the big leagues, my friend. You're starting in New York City at Caroline's Comedy Club. Yes. Where all the greats have been from Seinfeld to Howie Mandel to Chris Rock to Eddie Murphy, you name Leno, them. All the, Leno, all the guys probably and girls. Probably Pryor, right. maybe, right. I don't right. know. How yeah. did this happen? And why are you so crazy to want to do stand-up comedy? It's a great question. I, I wonder that myself sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I've, growing up, I've always been fascinated with comedy. I mean, I love to laugh. I mean, my mantra in life is laugh often and fear not. And so I love to laugh, I love funny things, I love to make jokes and love to respond to jokes. But uh, you know, I grew up with Carson and Letterman and Leno and all those guys and, and I've just always been amazed at stand-up comedy. I mean, how, and like you said, you did it for 10 years. I mean, people get up and it's their job to make an audience who they've just met laugh. And I think that's gotta be one of the hardest things in the world to do. And so, which, that, but basically, that's your day job. This, well, in a sense. In a sense, yes. I'm, I'm, you know, as a pastor, you get up there in front of people every week and share something that's meaningful and purposeful and applicable and hopefully helpful in people's lives and whatnot. And there's laughs in your story and the things you share with them. In mine. Not in every pastor's. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. I think that's what the problem with the church is. We don't, we don't laugh enough, you know? People, I mean, when you think of church, you think of laughter. No. 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 And, and you probably, yeah, because we, 
we as pastors, we haven't done a good job of sharing the laughter of life. Right. You know, in the... What yeah, it, what I always the, think of it as stiff and serious. Right, right. So, I'm not to change that, hopefully. Or at least try to change that. Are you nervous? Not... Well, t actually, two questions. So, I'll start with question one. Are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> Even though you're used to getting up in front of, how many people are you normally talking to on, a, yeah. on any given Sunday? 350, 400, something okay. like that. Okay, and so yeah. that's probably double what, what the comedy club holds. Right. And so... you, you Still help, intimidating, you, though. Very. Because, because you know, if, I, if I'm talking about the Bible, I mean, this is my playbook. It's I your mean, house. This, this is my house, yeah. <clears throat> right. And I, I'm confident about that. But, I mean, you, you, know, you tell me. I mean, you did it for 10 years. I mean, when you walk out there, is, is the crowd, I've heard this, but I, I'm not sure I believe it. Is the crowd pulling for you or as a comedian, or are they sitting there going, let's see what you got? Yeah, prove it to me. What, yeah. what, do, you, what do you got? You know? That's I interesting. Mean, are, um, they, are they easy to make laugh, or are they, are so, they, is it a challenge? Uh, I think it depends who you are and the setting. Yeah. So if it's a crowd, obviously, and they're coming to see... Uh, Chris Rock or Jerry Seinfeld they're pulling for you right if they're at Caroline's on a random <laughs> what night is it Monday be? night on a random Monday night <laughs> yeah, you're screwed man <laughs> hostile territory but yeah. I'm assuming right up top you're gonna mention your day job absolutely so and I that's... think that's going to make them pull for you okay. because I think that instantly makes you my dad, who doesn't do comedy, but as you know, right. uh, has got some experience on stage yes, performing. Yes, he does. Yeah. He gave me great advice when I started out, which was don't focus on laughs. Don't right. worry about laughs. Worry about just being likable. And right. if they like you, they will laugh at you. Right. If they don't like you, they won't. Right. And in your case, I think when you say I'm a pastor, it's just going to, it's an instant, it, think of my reaction instantly, like when you told me, and then you uh, told me, you, you know, when you sent me a message, you're like, hey, I want to get together, I know you did stand up, uh, let's talk. Right. You know, I was like, oh wow, that is so cool, like that just instantly changes any perception of a pastor or what people might have with right. you, it's like, oh wow, like that's cool, right. like because we automatically know like, well, so, and this wraps into my second question, which was, are you nervous about the material and being judged <laughs> by the church crowd for what you say as the comedian? Right. Do you that's, worry about that? that? Uh, that's a great question. Very insightful. And it is something I'm concerned about because, you know, people, people when they have found out that I'm going to Caroline's, they're like, oh, well, well give us the routine. Right, right, you know, right here on the spot. This isn't a comedy club. Right. This isn't New York City. This, right. You know, and this is, you know, I think our hope is to move, you know, obviously have this great experience at Caroline's. Yep. And then let's move to perhaps doing a one-man show type thing that yep. would be, that we, we could do in churches. Yep. That could, do, you know, biblical material, laughter, yep. funny things, is that. But there's, you know, there's material that I'll be talking about that I probably wouldn't say Might on a be Sunday morning. Right. I mean, so. And do you, yeah. do you worry? Because, you know, it's a risk you're taking. Like, I don't know if everyone can really appreciate the risk. But I mean, right. obviously you're in control of it to, to a certain extent. But also, you never know how someone, especially in 2020 now, you, everybody gets well, I, I ruffled like, so, yeah. like that. Right. So, I mean, you almost could be, you're really putting your neck on the line. Right. And then there's also the, you have your set material. I'm not trying to freak you out here, by the way. No, no, uh, no, no. no that's set good. material, good. right? Oh, yeah. But while you're on stage, stuff's going to come to you. Right. Because you're comedic. Right. And so it's in that area where an ad lib may come out and kill the room. Right. But could also be detrimental on the other side of life for you. Depend, you know right. what I mean? Just innocently. Not, right. not uh, you know. The most, the most interesting question I've been getting is, are you going to drop any F-bombs? Yes. You know my <laughs> thought on that. I want you to. I want you to just at the end. 
it's like the knockout punch to just be clean, 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 even if there's some innuendo, and you just figure out whatever that joke right, is, and, just, and you knock them out hammer. with that. It's gold. But again, that's for, it's easy for me to say that, because right. I don't have to live with whatever consequences there might be. Right. Because there's certainly, I think there's probably tons of people in the church that would laugh. But right. there's also probably some people that would be like, are you kidding me? Like, right. you lose credibility, you, right? You, right. Yeah. Almost oh, career we can't, suicide, we can't go to church. We can't go to church there anymore. Right. So do you, do you worry about that? I respect that. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone, at least the church, is like, well, is someone going to tape it? Well, of course they are. When do we get to see it? Well, you'll probably get to see the sizzle reel. Right. Which will be the nice, clean, yeah. you know, and any questionable material. I just thought of something brilliant. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Okay. I don't know if I should say it on here. Well, it's yeah. okay. I said Why not? The good thing is no one sees this show. <laughs> so don't worry. It's still like a secret between me and you. <laughs> That's right. What if off stage you could have it set up so that when you got to the F-bomb, off stage someone inserts the bleep? for you so it automatically bleeps you and then your next punch is like god is my sensor or whatever you know god god bleeps me when when he needs to or whatever that might be kind of funny and then yeah. you're off then you now you're scot free it's right. almost like you did the f word but you didn't or maybe i could just quote you a lot that would work too yeah you're gonna lose the like day my job, friend though. john says. yeah 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 that might work yeah john but not the bible john yeah <laughs> Like, yeah, John O. Yeah, yeah, oh, it doesn't man. carry the same weight. So yeah, so I, you know, I'm excited about it, John. It's uh, like I said, I've never done I mean, that specific thing before, and it's all due to our mutual friend Matt Kazam. Love Matt Kazam. Yeah, and yeah. he's put together this CEO and entrepreneur stand-up challenge. Genius. Where it takes people like me who've yeah. always wanted to do it, and how you know, did you hear about that? Through the wonders of Instagram, you know, I, I, I for a few weeks there, you know, on fr Fridays funny, and I just put some joke out there. Right. And then one day he liked it, and I said, "Who's Matt Kazam?" So right. I looked him up, and the, you know, there was his advertisement yeah. for the stand-up challenge. And I thought, so I messaged him, direct yeah. messaged him, and just said, "Hey, I want to know more about this." And so we Zoom called, and and here we are. You know? Matt Kazam, oh. you couldn't be in better hands with Matt Kazam. Matt Kazam. Um, I worked with at the, I believe, the Riviera Comedy Club or maybe Laugh Tracks Comedy Club here in Vegas at the Powell Station, which is no longer, well, the Riviera is no longer either. But, um, <laughs> see, yeah, when I work a club, it closes. Uh, but, or I might have worked with him on both occasions. I'm not, I don't remember, but um, I feel like I've worked with him a couple times over at Riviera. Okay. And uh, he was, you know, kind of a, a, a polished veteran comedian. Right. I was still kind of new. I'd been doing stand-up for a while just in Branson with my dad, but this was my first go-round. I luckily was on the same card with him, my first go-round right. doing a comedy club okay. in Vegas. And I was ner so same. I get it, man. Right. I've been doing something in Branson, but it was like, it's a different audience. It's kind of probably what you're experiencing, right? It's right. like, you know you know how to score for that audience, right? but now you're fish out of water. And even though it is the same, you don't know it's the same yet, right. so it freaks you out. But it oh, is the absolutely. same. Yeah. Sure, it's a little different, but it, at the end of the day, you're going to be fine. It's right. it's the same. It's just your mind messes with you. It does. Um, but it Matt does. Kazam was one of those people that kind of took me <clears throat> under his wing and made me calm, you know, feel right. calm. And he's just a good dude. He's and a great he's guy. So funny. He is. I mean, he's just his quick. mind. Yeah. His mind. He's great. I'm, I asked him that. I said, "Did your mind ever shut off?" Right. He goes, "No." <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Just, it's just the way it works. Yeah. You know? So he's 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 fabulous. So he's taken. Uh, I think there's seven of us, you know, that we've been on these Zoom calls week after week for the last couple months. Yeah. And we put material together and we share the material with each other on the Zoom call. And, and that's been a fascinating experience. It, I, don't, I don't know what it was like for you in yeah. your stand-up days, but it, telling a story and then having someone say, oh, you, if you add this in. Oh, yeah. You know, and just this, this kind of this collaboration. I would... What you're explaining, though, sounds nerve-wracking to me. Because it's almost like auditioning material to a small group of five, six, seven people. That it's, sounds nerve-wracking to me. And when you, so when you're doing that, are you delivering it to them? Uh, just like you would normally do it. Wow, I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, and I could not do that. And there's guys on the Zoom call, you know, they're eating breakfast. Blank you know, faces, like, right, yeah. <laughs> I was checking their, t you know, they're looking up, they're texting. Like, right. I, I couldn't do it, right, man. Right, right. 
And so, and, and, and Matt, you know, he's been very, he says, this is the, the hardest audience to look at. 100%. So if, you, so if you can do it in front of these, you know, right. six or seven on Zoom, right. you know, you'll be able to do it. Now, the, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, you, you go through the material and you might hear a few chuckles from everybody, but it, it's not enough that makes you pause and wait for the laughter to calm down. And then, so that sense of timing yeah. is going to be interesting. But I think you instinctively have that. I do. Already. I do. Yeah. Yes. Which is good. Right. Yeah. Because I think you mentioned to me, you it's know. It's definitely the hardest part is to and, wait for your and laughs. Enjoy the laughs. Yeah. Don't walk all over them. Yeah. You know, give them time. You know, come back. And also enjoy the silence in the event there is no laugh. Right. And enjoying and enjoying the silence and taking your time. And then even when you instinctively want to talk, tell yourself, nope, shut up for another three seconds. Right. You, sometimes you get a laugh <laughs> out of the right. silence. Right. right. Um, and then even if you don't, it's just it's just a good way to just you keep the pace. They're like sharks, the audience, in the when they smell blood in the sense of fear. Right. You're doomed. They get after you. Yeah. 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 But I think you're gonna be fine because, like I said, I, you know you've been doing it. It's just not called stand up. Right. What you've been doing. Right. And that and I think one of the original questions we asked was, you know, on one particular Sunday, I think it was back in September. Four people came out on that one particular Sunday and said, you know, you ought to think about doing stand-up. Huh. I was like, huh, okay. And then Matt showed up on the Instagram right. the next week. It's and I'm like, to be. okay, well, let's, let's the check it out. universe has yeah. spoken. It has. Yeah. So let's give it a try. And so would the goal be, like you said, to put together like a one-man show and eventually would you segue completely out of no? That's always that's your roots. That's your yeah. I don't life. see that. You would uh, marry. You would just marry, marry the two. two. Exactly. Exactly. But go on the road and you know, like I said, how, how long do you think a one man show should last? Would you say? Sixty to ninety minutes, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Hour fifteen, something yeah. like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And uh, when you talk now, how long are you? Most people say too long, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe twenty, twenty-five minutes, okay. something like that. Yeah. And it goes so, quick. It, from my perspective, it does. Yeah. It does. And it's easy. How long have you been doing it? 31 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. So it's just second nature to you. So that's, what, that's what's been interesting, too. If you had told, if you'd said, hey, Dave, I want you to come to my church, and you can speak for 13 minutes, I'd be like, that's it? Just 13 minutes? Right. But if you said, hey, come to my comedy club and speak for 13 minutes, <laughs> oh, crap. 13 right. minutes? Like, <laughs> I want to be on stage for 13 How minutes. How long are you doing it, Caroline? It's, thir it's 13 it's minutes. It's 13? Yeah. That's a long set for your first set. Right. Yeah. Because right. usually three to five would be a first timer. You right. Know. But again, so, yeah, you you got this. Well, we'll you got see. this. I, well, I'll let you know. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I, ex I want a tape. I want to see. Oh, yeah? I want to oh, yeah. see some highlights. We'll get the whole thing done and then uh maybe the next step might be maybe we get you up in laugh factory here oh i know a guy. I, that'd be awesome i know a guy harry okay. basil harry basil's been on the show harry come on harry i'd love to be with you yeah <laughs> to the show and he said harry basil harry basil harry right basil, harry basil. he did <laughs> yeah yeah that's good stuff man yeah so that's this coming monday yes seven o'clock eastern time now in the on the plane uh, do you sleep on the plane, or are you a awake kind of guy on the plane? Are you going to be it's going a 6 over this in your head over and over uh, and over? I woke up this morning just making sure I knew the transitions. Yeah. You know, from this subject to the next subject, and I think I've got it down. But I, but on the plane, I'll still be right going through it. Yeah, absolutely. Is that what you did? I mean, did you did you did you find yourself just freaked out? Yeah, I used to compare it. Not not all my fighter friends are gonna laugh at me and DM me, but like I used to compare what I did to being a fighter. Like and obviously it's different because you're not throwing punches on stage, right. but it's the same kind of thing. You know, there's an event. You know, I have to be in front of a bunch of people talking, right. and you don't know what the reaction is gonna be or the outcome is gonna be. Just like a fight, right? And you have that jitter and those nerves. 
and it's rough, man. Like right. it's you try to visualize how it's going to go and whatever, and you get out there, and it's you know everything goes out the window. You realize, oh my god, these lights are so bright. Oh my god, I can't see anybody. Oh my god, they didn't laugh. It's brutal. The first time I did stand up was opening for my dad to two thousand right. people in Branson, Missouri, Jeez. and Entertainment Tonight was there because it was the grand opening of my dad at the Tony Orlando Theater. Right, uh, Bill Cosby's in the audience. Uh, Norman Jeez. Brokaw, the, who has since passed away, but the uh, chairman of the board of the William Morris Agency. You know, oh, sure. Uh, Wayne Newton, Bobby Vinton, Andy Williams. You know, the whole Mel Tillis. You know, the who's who of Branson. Right. Uh, and I was supposed to do five minutes, and I ripped through all five minutes of my act. David, maybe in two minutes, sweating, just a disaster. Right. Awful. Both. So bad. But was it an adrenaline rush for you? A hundred percent. Incredible. Yeah. It was yeah. like the biggest love hate. Can't wait to do it again and never right. want to do this again at right. all at the same time. But it is fun. It it is I'm not I don't I don't do any drugs, but I, I get that right. rush of adrenaline oh, yeah. and then seeking wanting it. You know, you probably get it on your Sundays. Oh sure. Still. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, it's I mean you're yeah. sky you're sky high. Yeah, especially when you when you say something and it makes people laugh. It's just, it's yes. the greatest feeling. It makes you happy. The power you feel from it. Right. Uh, how people respond to you after. You probably have this too. Like when you talk to people after. Right. You just get done and you meet people backstage or wherever. You know, right. Um, the reaction and seeing how what you said affected them in a good way. Yeah. Right. And that, that's one of the strange things about public speaking is that... You know, you can be up there, and as you said, all sorts of thoughts are going through your mind. And there's been plenty of Sundays where I thought, "What am I doing up here?" You right. know, I'm not connecting with anybody. Look right. at the people; they're just staring at me. I'm not feeling the energy. Let's just get th let's get through this. And then at the door, green people. Oh, David, that was the best sermon ever. But I really spoke to me like, yeah. "Wow, how about that?" I mean, and that makes your day. How many people that you know? personally are going to be in the audience watching you and do you do you feel better knowing they're there or would you rather they weren't there I didn't want anyone <laughs> I didn't want anybody that I knew I wanted no I wanted complete get right. away so we've got about I think three people I know okay. are going to be there so uh, a good friend of mine from Napa Valley she lives in Wilmington Delaware now her daughter lives okay. in Manhattan so she, she's going to take so the train up and yeah yeah and then a guy in the church uh, works for the RJ. His okay. daughter lives in New York City, so we're getting two tickets for her to come on down with a friend. And okay. So that's that's yeah. all I know. That's a few, good. A few other friends just just couldn't make it, so we're gonna try. But it's probably less pressure that yes. way. Yes. Because like I, I I don't even like. Um, it's weird. At my dad's theater, I was fine after like a couple months of right. doing stand up. Like, didn't bother. Friends could come, and sure. I had that. I had that act honed in. Right. When I did like a comedy club or something, I didn't want my friends to come. I didn't want anybody to come. When I opened for Tom Jones oh, in I that. in uh, yeah you know <laughs> I opened for Tom Jones, David. So you a funny little comedy club. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I opened for Tom Jones in Council Bluffs, Iowa at Harvey's Casino, which is now that? Harris Casino. Right. Um, my dad surprised me and came in. Luckily, I did not know because had I, I known see. he was out there, I might have lost my nerves. Right. Sure. You know? Um, but uh, when I came off stage, he was the first person I saw, and I was like, that was really cool. Very cool. Yeah, and, uh, and then Tom, you know, because as I'm coming off, they're basically playing Tom Jones on. Right. And uh, Tom passed me, and he, he just went, very good, very good. Very you good, know, very I was good. like, wow, oh, that's, that's great. That's hot. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. But, uh, yeah, I'd rather not have friends or family in, like, a first-time setting like right. that because you just want to just tune out. Well, it's, it's kind of like what you were alluding to earlier in that – you, you have a certain group of people in your life who know you only in this venue right. or in this role. Right. And now you're doing a different role. Right. And some people can swing with that. Right. Some people can't. Right. Yeah. You know? So, and it's, and it's interesting because some people have said, well, I like to tell jokes, but that's different than totally. stand up. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's. 100%. 
I mean, yeah, and they're, being they're, funny in your living room and being <laughs> funny on stage. Because that's and, all. And I can openly admit, I'm way better at the dinner table than I ever was on stage. I wish I was half as funny on stage as I am at the dinner table on sure. a sidewalk on right. on Trap and Eastern. <laughs> I could do 20 minutes on the corner of Trap and Easter with no problem, but when you step on the stage, it's it's different, man. It's a, diff- it's a different world. Yeah. Altogether. Yeah. So. Well, good luck with that. I well, can't wait. You. I can't I can, wait to well, hear the result. I'll let you I'm know. I'm pulling for you. I appreciate from here. that more than you know. Thank and, you. And uh, let me ask you before we get out of here. You live in Las Vegas. You live in Sin City. This episode's yeah. definitely going to be called "The Saint and the Sinner." <laughs> uh, what is it like for you living like like you had mentioned to me before we started rolling? You've never played a hand of blackjack. No. You've never no. played Keno even. <laughs> right. Nothing. Right. No. Bingo in church maybe. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now is that because you is it against your principles or? Well, I I will. So I'll correct myself. Yeah. I have done a slot machine. Okay. And that five dollars went. By in a yeah. minute, I thought. Does huh. that? Yeah. So then, my wife and I, we did one more time, and she lost her twenty dollars in two minutes, and then I got up to six dollars. I won six dollars. Okay. And she came over, pushed that cash out button, said, "We're done." All right. <laughs> nice. So, but it's it's interesting. So I I said to someone in my church, I would have a hard time, you know, standing there at the craps table, and a parishioner would come by. And, Oh, my pastor's at the craps table. Right. It's not a good look. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, whose money is that? You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but yeah, then, let's but then, the plate around one more time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but then the, another prisoner, I told a prisoner about that, and another prisoner came up and said, "But David, it is legal to do that. You're right. not doing anything illegal." Interesting. And I thought, well, you know, that's true. Fair I mean, enough. That, yeah, that's yeah, absolutely fair enough. So. I don't know. It's just, a, it's a weird position to be in. I, Do you find yourself living your everyday life, though? Like, um, because you're, I'd almost equate you to a celebrity in a sense, like, you sort of are, with a specific group of people, you do have to live under a microscope, probably. Right. And you're be a public judged figure, and, yeah. So do you... Do you subconsciously like think you like, okay before you do not that you're out living some crazy life, but right. you definitely certainly probably you think like that, right? Like you you right. think about all of your actions and all the things you say, all the things you might post, even a- right? Absolutely, absolutely. Just like I'll share with you and the crowd. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to like a Hakkasan or a nightclub. I've, I've never been. Okay. So I want to go sometime, just, okay. just to see what it's like. Can we make I mean, this happen? Yes, let's okay. make it. <laughs> We're going to end on this. I'm taking you, and I'll make it easier for you. Okay. Whatever happens in the daytime is certainly legal, right? So let's take you to a day club first. Okay. Let's take you to Wet Republic. Okay. Over at MGM. All right. Where my little pint-sized warrior works. Yes. And we'll get Vanessa. a nice, I'll have him hook us up with a nice alcohol free do you drink or no no drinking i, I can you can yeah. okay so we'll get you know with not to excess never, uh never. but yeah we'll have a couple cocktails and we'll yeah. i mean i hear about djs yes. and dancing but yes. i was like does do that like really that happen i do like edm kind of like calvin harris or a yeah. zed or stuff like that yeah i mean yeah. Just, you know yeah get that yeah, bass yeah, going yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely All right. done <laughs> This summer, we are going to Wet Republic. You heard it here. The Saint and the Sinner at Wet Republic. (laughs) Tune in later. We'll see you there. (laughs) That was great. Man. That was fun. You know, I can't can't thank you enough. Yeah. I mean, it's... um, It's good stuff. Because, you know, I saw you at the UFC. Yeah. They said, that's John Orlando. I thought, is that that Tony Orlando's son? They're like, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. And so you're like... Hey, you know, we got this charity event. You know, hey, you have a card? So I gave him my card. And he said, yeah, I'll text you. And I.